anyone who takes an interest in camouflage or concealment is also going to ask, but how do we hide our heat signature from technology such as forward-looking infrared or synthetic aperture radar? And you even get handheld devices that have infrared or even thermal properties. And I'm going to conduct a couple of experiments on the kinds of tops that we use for bushcraft shelter building, mylar blankets, as well as these thickened insulating mylar tops that you get online. I've now basically got an insulating layer that hides my thermal signature. Have a look. The minute I switch the thermal camera on, you can see everything on this side of the top from the engine bay, but everything on this side of the top is hidden behind the thermal insulating layer. All right, so there are actually plenty of options for hiding your heat signature. There is one catch to this though. I'm Clarice, welcome to the Live Ready channel. So I've gotten this question on the YouTube channel a couple of times and it's, it really is a valid question. How do you hide your heat signature? If you really are in trouble and you're needing to remain concealed, we also need to think about the kinds of technology that we need to remain concealed from. It's not just casual observation that you're going to want to remain concealed from. So things like uh, thermal cameras as well as infrared cameras, they can actually pick up your heat signature and there is a difference between a thermal camera and an infrared camera or a camera that's got infrared capabilities. Both of those work on the infrared spectrum, so it's a light spectrum, but thermal cameras work on a much longer wavelength, whereas infrared cameras that only have infrared capability work on the shorter wavelengths. So every thermal camera is going to have infrared capabilities or work on infrared light, but not every infrared camera is going to give you a thermal print. For example, an infrared camera can actually just give you night vision. So that works on reflected light as well. So it's not just seeking heat, although it can give you a heat signature depending on the camera's capability, um, but it's going to take all the reflected light and it's going to create an image from that reflected light. So it paints a picture of the entire environment. Whereas a thermal camera, that's what this is, is going to show you emitted heat. It still paints a picture it still shows you what is emitting heat. Um, other sources of light doesn't get picked up on a thermal camera. What a thermal camera does is it literally only takes emitted heat. In other words, what my body heat is doing, what the heat from the engine bay from my car is doing. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. What we're doing here is we're fine tuning it to see what emitted heat looks like and whether we can actually hide a heat emission from your body or from a vehicle. So out of interest, thermal imaging can be seen through a mirror. So you will see a thermal image reflected in a mirror. However, it can't be seen through glass because once I've got a glass barrier up between myself and the thermal imaging, I've now basically got an insulating layer that hides my thermal signature. Have a look. So now that the window is up, my thermal signature is hidden by the glass. When I open the window again, now there's no barrier between myself and the thermal imaging. So now again, you'll pick me up on the thermal camera. Whereas in a mirror, you're basically seeing a reflected image um, and you, you wouldn't think that that would work because it's still reflected light but you can see thermal images through a mirror. Really interesting. Now I've gotten this top up here and it is one of those um, Mylar insulating ones. It's not a special one. I got it off Timu. So it can't be a really high quality top, okay? But it does actually work to hide the engine bay um, emission or the, the heat emission from the engine bay. So the minute I switch the thermal camera on, you can see everything on this side of the top from the engine bay, but everything on this side of the top is hidden behind the thermal insulating layer. So I would actually venture to say even the thermal um, windscreen covers that you get for the inside of your windscreen would probably hide a heat signature. There is one catch to this though. If you take any top 
doesn't matter how well insulated that tarp is or how thick it is because this is one of the thicker ones. The minute you take that and you put it on top of the engine bay, the heat from the engine bay is going to actually be transmitted onto the tarp and that tarp is going to warm up and then it's going to show the heat signature that you're trying to avoid showing. So that is why I've got the tarp set up between two trees here and similarly you can put it up over the top of the vehicle if you're worried about drone surveillance. But in order to still hide the heat signature, I would need to hang it between two trees or put it separate from the vehicle. And the same is going to apply to your body. Your body temperature is going to be transmitted to whatever it touches. So my clothes will warm up and you'll see on the thermal imaging, especially underarms, um, your neck or your head where there's a lot of blood flow. It's going to show up a lot on the thermal imaging. All right, so let's get to experimenting with some of the tops that I've got available. And we can also try and see if we can hide like a personal heat signature as well. It's quite a bit of fun actually. Okay, so for filming purposes, I'm giving you a first hand um, or a first person view of what the thermal imaging looks like over there. I think my camera is upside down, but it doesn't matter. Oh, and this has been sitting on top of the car, so it's actually hot. So you should actually be able to see um, this has a heat signature at the moment um, of its own. Whereas, once it's cooled down, that's quite interesting to note actually, if you leave anything on the car, because the car is actually still quite hot. If you leave anything on the car, it's going to pick up that heat from the car and the vehicle's heat is also going to like leave a print on the covering. All right, how warm is this now? But you should now see basically just the square top that actually hides my, my print. So you can definitely see how hot the vehicle is behind me still, but the top also introduces regularity where it hides my heat signature. So the minute I move the top in front of me, it now also still doesn't look like the rest of the bush. So if I were going to try and camouflage myself and hide my heat signature, I would once again have to employ the principle of stacking, um, and of introducing irregularity and um, breaking the color, breaking the surface um, and also staying in the negative space. And the last thing you want when you're trying to hide your heat signature is to be in an area that is warmer, that is already going to attract the person who has infrared or thermal vision. Um, you don't want to attract their eye. So you're going to stay away from areas that would have heated. So rocks, for example, tend to retain heat for quite long um, after the sun has gone down. So if you go and lie near a rock, um, you will pick up the heat from the rock and you will also um, end up showing up in the heat signature of that rock. It may also be a camouflage tactic in and with itself. So if you know that the rocks are really hot and they're going to be similar to your own body temperature and you've got nothing to hide your heat signature with, maybe consider going to hide out by the rocks. Um, so if they're still hot from being in the sun, it might be more difficult to pick up your heat signature if you're amongst rocks that have been in the sun all day. Then the other thing is if you ask a sniper, um, they'll tell you the best time to move in terms of thermal vision is dusk or dawn. Um, because of the changes in temperature and the ambient temperature in the surroundings, what ends up happening is you end up getting these fluctuating pictures of this thing is cooling down, that thing is still a little bit warm. So it throws off thermal vision a little bit. Whereas at night, thermal imaging stands out like a sore thumb. Your print is gonna be so obvious at night on thermal vision. Um, so what I've done here is I've put the top up between the two trees and you should be able to right over here, see me as a person show up as a heat signature um, and then as soon as I move behind the mylar blanket or I put it in front of me um, you should actually see my heat signature disappear and then the interesting thing is if I held my hand this is a bit thick it's going to take a while but if I held my hand against the top here for long enough you would start to see the imprint of my hand on the other side of the top so if I wanted to hide my heat signature I could quite comfortably use something like this in order to cover me as a person um, as long as my body heat isn't being transmitted to that top directly and there is a let's say a layer of air between my body and the top my heat is actually not going to be transmitted to the top and I should be 
covered. My heat signature should completely disappear. Okay, so this over here is option number two. This is a Unigear tarp, the kind of bushcraft tarp that you would use to set up a shelter. So it's also got the silver lining on the inside, pretty similar to what the other one did. It's just not as thick. It doesn't have the thick insulating layer that that tarp does. All right, so let's see if I can find some paracord here. Even me just holding this in front of myself should actually already hide my heat signature, considering that one, it is a barrier between myself and what the camera is picking up, and two, it also has some sort of insulating property. So even if I just hold it up here, it should already give me a little bit of concealment. Let's just work this out here. Tie it up. Not doing a very good job at tying up tops today, but that's not the point of this exercise. All right, so from here, you should actually not be able to see my body from where the top is downwards, nor should you be able to see the vehicle behind me. Um, so the vehicle is actually still quite warm, so it does get picked up on the thermal camera. However, as soon as it cools down, it should also disappear. But it goes to show you how long a vehicle actually stays warm and how long you can detect a heat signature from a vehicle. Okay, so that is a bushcraft top. And out of interest, while I'm standing here talking, let's see if my hand starts to show um, on the thermal vision, just because I'm placing my hand against the inside of the top here. So I should be starting to transmit some sort of heat through the top and then my hand should start to show. Um, so I can use a plain and simple top. Anything that is insulating, like you can, you can expect heat to behave like heat. Um, so any insulating product that does not conduct that heat at all or any method that you stack things, whether it's a layer of air between tops or between mylar blankets or whatever, whatever you do that is going to insulate your body heat is going to prevent it from showing up on the thermal imagery. Now you must remember with infrared it creates a picture. So we still have to think about the target indicators for camouflage um, and surface, in other words, having a black square that just literally shows up as a black square is also going to be a regular surface. So that's going to show up as a cold black square on thermal imaging whereas the environment emits heat. So you still need to think about those kinds of things. So stacking vegetation in front of your hide, for example, is also going to break the regularity that you find from that surface on the thermal imaging or on the infrared. All right, my hand should be showing by now because it is actually feeling quite warm against my hand. And it's almost like you can smear your heat on it as well. So where I touch, it sort of goes like a lighter color all right, then there is a third option. There is also the normal mylar blanket or the space blanket that you find in the shop. Let's have a look and see how we do with that one. I'll take this down again. Should be able to see me again. Option number three is a plain and simple mylar blanket. One of these normal ones. It doesn't really matter which side you use or whether it's got a green side or not. The simple fact is it's an insulating barrier between myself and the thermal camera. So the thermal imaging is not going to pick up on my heat signature because of the mylar blanket. So that was single folded and now this is double folded. And have a look where the mylar blanket is. You can't see um, my face unless I touch it. Um, and as soon as I touch it or I come out over the mylar blanket, then you start to see me and the heat signature or the heat that I'm giving off. The same thing will apply with if you're wearing a lot of layers of clothing. If you're really well insulated, you're going to be hiding your heat signature to some extent, but your heat is still gonna get transferred to whatever you're wearing over time. Pretty cool, hey? Have a look, there's my hand. All right, pretty cool. <laughs> to illustrate my point about things cooling down at different rates, if you look at the things that I have on the roof rack through thermal imaging, what you end up seeing is literally the water level in the water tank because the water is gonna retain its temperature for longer than what the plastic insulating water tank is or the metal of the roof rack. Similarly, you can see the level of the fuel inside the jerry cans. 
um, and I've emptied the right hand side one out to put some fuel in a motorbike so you can see that there's different levels of fuel in the jerry cans. And the same is going to apply to the environment. Where things are made of different substances, they're going to cool down at different rates. And you can use that to your advantage if you need to camouflage yourself. Even if you don't have a tarp, you can use what you find in the environment, like a rock is going to retain heat a whole lot longer um, than what, say, the sand or the soil is going to. So you can use that rock to help to camouflage your heat signature as well. All right, so there are actually plenty of options for hiding your heat signature. Now in this series on camouflage and concealment, I've also discussed camouflaging or concealing your campsite as well as your vehicle. And there's always going to be considerations around gear and the kinds of things that you are carrying with you. Um, whether that is you've got animals with you or whether it is the stuff on the roof rack that's been sitting in the sun the whole day and now you want to hide your heat signature. Um, but everything on the roof rack is actually hot as well. Then you would have to put a tarp up as a ceiling over your vehicle. Now, as far as infrared and thermal imaging goes, that's fine. Um, but for synthetic aperture radar, you're going to have a bit of trouble if you put up a flat ceiling in the bush. Then again, if you are being tracked by drones or aircraft that have synthetic aperture radar capabilities, you are in a lot of big trouble and I would not even be out in the bush. Um, and there could be many reasons why that would happen and you may not have been the cause of the trouble. So just consider that this all sounds really ominous but at the same time people have landed up in weird situations and when things go wrong they go wrong in a weird way. So we consider all of these possibilities. Um, for gear the same thing applies as for your body heat. You don't want your gear to touch whatever you're using to cover it because your gear is also going to transmit heat to that covering or to the top or whatever you're using. So you would have to set um, a top up as a ceiling or as an actual top just over your vehicle or over your campsite if you wanted to conceal the campsite heat signature from above. Do remember that in um, low light or when everything gets cold like it is now there's no sun out anymore so everything is starting to cool down and by the time that um, everything else is cooled down your body heat signature stands out so much more on thermal imaging just because you're the only thing that is emitting heat. It can also take your gear and your vehicle and the things that you're carrying with you, even the space where you've lit a campfire and put the campfire out. The ground underneath can stay warm for quite a long time. So if you are needing to conceal a campsite from thermal imaging, you'd want to also make sure that everything has sufficient time to cool down before it gets dark. Um, thermal imaging does not pick up ref reflected um, light, but it does pick up reflected heat in the same way that my hand print shows on a top when I touch the top. Um, if you bring something that emits heat close to your skin, your skin is going to pick that up as well. For example, if you put a cigarette in your mouth on thermal imaging, um, your face actually gets lit up as well because it reflects the heat that is being emitted by the lighter or the cigarette. Whereas if you take a torch and you shine it on your face in thermal imaging, you're not going to see the light from the torch because thermal imaging doesn't pick up reflected light. That's it from me on thermal imaging and hiding your heat signature using tops and mylar blankets. If you've liked this video or you found value here, remember to hit like and subscribe. Follow me on social media. I post a bit more on the everyday live ready stuff on Instagram, as well as a hint or two of what's to come to the YouTube channel in future. Until the next time, live ready.